All right, I just want to say hopefully everyone's doing well out there. Um, I got uh, the Quenville boys, Pete, uh, Johnny, and Dave on here. Uh, I'm just going to get them to introduce themselves, give a little bit of information on where they played this past season, and then we'll get into a little bit of information uh, for kind of young hockey players, see different things on skates and kind of different things that we can do during the uh, outbreak. So if, uh, Pete, you want to start us off? Yeah, Peter Quenville. Uh, this year I played uh, between Rapid City in the ECHL and a little bit with Rockford in the American League. Um, since being back home, you know, in Edmonton, just kind of getting back into training. It's been almost three weeks now trying to get, you know, fairly normal, fortunate enough to have some equipment at home. So, um, yeah, it's been, you know, maybe not quite where it would be normally, but still pretty good overall. And, you know, I'm just trying to stay busy and active and work on the game. Perfect. All right. Uh, Dave Pogo, um, from, uh, I'm playing now for the Binghamton Devils. Uh, started out with uh, the Bridgeport Sound Tigers. Um, quick stint in Worcester for a bit and then was traded um, <laughs> near the trade deadline to Jersey, obviously. So kind of uh, same as Pete, just been trying to, find different ways to pass the time and obviously stay active and ready um, just in case. I'm John and uh, I played this year between Rockford and uh, Blackhawks. So it was a good year and it's been a good time so far in quarantine here. We've got a good crew and having a good time. So it could be worse, but wish you could have finished the season. It was uh, cut too short and, you know, you always want to try to play in the playoffs, but it goes, I guess. Maybe we'll have playoffs soon. We'll see. Hopefully, right? Yeah. Um, so the first question I just want to kind of get you guys to share a bit of information on is uh, what aspect do you think is the most important part of, of skating now in today's game? Well, I can, I can start off here. Um, I would say in today's game with uh, the speed, I think, you know, the ability to be dynamic on your edges, um, have really good edge control, which allows you to be elusive, um, especially through open ice. I think, you know, today's a puck carrier's game. And um, if you have, you know, the elusiveness and the edge control to be able to shift weight and, and be hard to track and defend, I think you're going to give yourself a lot of opportunities. So, uh, yeah, I would say that would be probably – you know, the most valuable thing um, in today's game. Yeah, I think probably, I think the one thing for me, I think I really see in skating nowadays is just the ability to have so many different layers you're skating. Um, obviously being able to skate really fast straight ahead is a big thing and kind of races for pucks. And, and then also like he kind of mentioned is having really good edges and being elusive on the puck and um, being able to make plays and, and uh, make decisions using your skating. And I think that's, I think where the game's at now where guys uh, either use their skating to, to obviously help them score goals or make plays or, to, um, you know, help in defensive situations or whatever it is. But I think it's, like I said, just having that layers to your skating. Yeah, like I think like different players um, are do different things in their skating that some people would consider them a good skater or it helps their game a lot. So... You know, some guys are really strong in their skates and, you know, that creates a lot of opportunity for them in other parts of their game or some other guys have really good high-end breakaway speed. They can, you know, beat a guy or whatever. Like some guys are quicker and, you know, like shiftier and helps a lot in, um, you know, corners and those kind of situations. So, you know, for all different guys, it's kind of different, um, you know, the skills that you – like that you kind of use that you um you know have a part using, of your game. using your strengths of your game to build off yeah, your using game, your right? strengths of your skating or whatever that really kind of help you be good because most guys that are playing at a high level have some part of their skating that's really good i don't know what, what, what part it is exactly but usually every guy has some part of their skating that's really good you know and that's you know, synonymous with all guys that play at a high level, I think, for sure. The one thing that I'd say I've noticed with guys like most recently is most players that have that exceptional skating ability are always able to put themselves in a position to build speed out of pretty much every situation on the ice, whether that's, you know, coming out of a corner or whether that's a change of direction. They have that ability to just build quicker. Um, yeah, or, you know, I just – and even – 
to put it simpler, just moving their feet, you know, like moving their feet more. That's like a big thing. I think a lot of guys that are the best skaters, they just, they don't have hesitation. And this hesitation is what really like slows you down. Cause if most guys were all moving their feet, they'd all be, we'd all be pretty close in speed. I think everybody's, you know, pretty close at, at, at a high level for speed. And so I think it's like, you know, hesitation as opposed to, you know, the ability that, like you said, keep moving at all times, you know, regardless if you're coming out of a thing, uh, a turn or, you know, wherever on the ice, you know, moving your feet, all the best players, you know, they, their feet are moving in, especially in the times when they need to move their feet and they need speed. They seem to always have speed because they built it up. So, um, yeah. Anything you want to add, Pete? No, I think that's pretty spot on. I, you know, I think, um, Part of it too, like Johnny kind of touched on, is the mind. I think, you know, more than anything, the best skaters we see are often some of the smartest players, right? I think their skating appears elite because of their brain and the ability to know where they're going on the ice. And and I think that that's all part of it. So I think Johnny's pretty spot on with with the hesitation and the decision making allows certain guys to appear better, like better skaters than others. And then, you know, there's probably other guys who maybe aren't as great, but because the mind's so sharp, um, they're able to fill that gap. Yeah, like, I just feel like just the feeling that I have from playing and, like, playing with other guys, like, I always have – I always see guys that they never look as fast as they are in the games, you know, and you never – like, there's so many players that I always see that – you see them skate really fast, whether it's practice or whatever the situations are, skills, whatever. And they, they're never that fast in the game, but you should skate your fastest in the game probably, right? That's when you should probably find your highest gears in the game. But I, I, see, I feel like I see a lot of situations where that's, that's not the case. That uncontrolled environment, right, where you don't have the – you don't get to dig. Exactly. They don't win. feel like they can – they, they're – whatever's around them slows the feet down. I'm victim to it too. It happens to me all the time, especially when the game, like if a game gets, you know, like in the middle of the game, if the game is getting like, you know, fast, that's what happens. First thing that happens is you stop moving your feet when the game gets fast, too fast. Start, you know? start thinking, right? Yeah. yeah so just that, just kind of moving on to the next question. Um, I know that we've done a little bit of kind of video work with you guys in the past and some biomechanics specific work. So just if you guys have some thoughts kind of on how that, was beneficial to you or how you might use that in your day-to-day -day kind of training, even some of the mechanical stuff that we've talked about in the past. Uh, biomechanically. Well, I think. Bio, but can you just explain for me, Brian, for a second, just so I could give you a better answer, honestly. <laughs> so they talk about biomechanics, just bio meaning human mechanics being motion. So kind of the idea of watching how you move, uh, watching how you might apply force to the ice. You talked about kind of the idea of keeping your feet moving. The mm -hmm. one thing that I kind of come back to with players is the idea of constant force production or always putting force into the ice, no matter what situation you're in. So, you know, you look at some of the flat foot skating stuff that people see now where you're not moving your feet, but you're still applying force to the ice, right? So kind of that ability cool. to always, always generate speed. So just yeah, how, the, how we kind of would watch how you move and how you take that information to make you a better player yourself. Yeah, I think even one thing for me where I obviously like we talked about is just breaking that down with video and I think being able to see what you look like and how you truly move is is a good indicator and being able to figure out maybe there are certain uh, habits or aspects of your skating that maybe are hindering your skating or obviously are an elite part of your skating and that's why you're maybe so good at maybe for example getting into crossovers uh, or uh, like certain stuff like that but I think just being able to uh, understand that stuff through video and being able to break it down and, and that awareness is, is also big. I think especially for younger players too, like, it, it, I mean, it goes all the way up to the pros, of course, but as, as you get younger and younger with it as well, it is more and more important because when you're, um, you know, younger player, you're coming up a, a major tweak maybe in stride or, um, you know, like you said, biomechanics, um, can make a big difference in, in like a, you know, in the sprout of a hockey player's career, I guess, you know? Yeah. Um, 
course, for sure. And if a guy, say a guy's in a situation where, you know, he's coming up as a pretty good player and he's not a great skater, but he learns, um, you know, a couple of things that really can push him a long ways. It happens a lot and his skating it, it takes such a big jump. And, you know, you see a lot of those guys that they're good players and then their skating takes a big jump and then they're, they are the ones who really move up. You see it all the time, you know, that's what I would say about it. Lots of times what, what I'll kind of say to the players is if you're kind of touted as a guy that has skating as a weakness, as long as you don't hear anyone talk about your skating anymore, it's no longer an issue. Like, you're, like it's very rare to go as like a, to make that jump to the next level where your skating is your weakness to become exceptional at the yeah. next level. But if you can get yourself up to. Yeah. And then there's them saying you're a good skater. And then there's past that, of course. And then there's that mid where they're, you know, you're just, you're right in the play, you know, that's, and that's, you know, most of the guys, you know, are in the mix there. Right. Do you think you want to add Pete? Uh, I think from a biomechanics standpoint, for me, you know, something that I've figured out recently, probably in the last couple of years is um, how important ankle flexion is. Um, truthfully, I think until probably the age of 23, I had, no ankle flexion or none relative to the amount that I do now or that I should have had. And I think it's allowed me to make a large leap in my skating. Um, so between ankle flexion and, you know, the way you're gripping the ice, um, I think that allows you to become a better glider and then therefore be able to still move fast and, and, and shift through other players without taking strides. I think that's where all the best players in the game are at. You know, the bars all McDavid, McKinnon, they do that the best, better than anyone. And I think that's the biggest difference. Yeah, that ability to shift everything forwards and hinge through the ankle, right? It's yeah. definitely a, a big thing that we talk about getting knee out over toes. It's a really simple way to think about it. Peter will give you the uh, – Peter will give <laughs> that's it. Sorry. <laughs> Peter will give you the – he will give you the science, uh, the science room uh, answer. I will give you the locker room answer, okay? So the <laughs> Every answer time, right? Thing. <laughs> so the same answer. Um, speaking kind of about in terms of like the ankle flexion, um, anything specifically you guys do with your skates? Um, if you want to kind of maybe there's some tricks of the trade you've kind of played around with for that or, you know, changing profiles, changing sharpenings. Any kind yeah, of I had an issue with that for years after a couple ankle injuries and obviously break my leg a couple years ago that I had to kind of tinker with some stuff. But I think the thing I really like is just one eye that down gives you a lot of flexion, a lot of mobility to kind of really get on your toes and be mobile with, uh, you know, cutbacks and just simple edge work. So that top eye, yeah, that's a, ni that's a nice thing. As long as you're getting that good quality ankle kind of lock in the boot, the more ankle mobility you get, the better for sure. Anything else, Pete? Yeah, like Davey said, uh, skipping an eyelet, tying your skates pretty loose, I think helps, um, you know, a lot with that. Um, and then as far as, you know, profile and sharpening goes, uh, you know, the boys would, would agree with this. We all kind of shifted the way we did it probably four or five years ago, six years ago, towards uh, a shallower profile. I think a lot of kids today are using pretty stock 5.8s. Um, I would say the sooner you can get away from that towards three quarter or one inch is probably better off. I think um, it allowed, you know, me personally, and I think the boys as well to be more efficient, um, less burnout in the legs, just from having, you know, less dig into the ice lets you glide a, a bit easier. And for anyone and, that's uh, watching just for what Pete said, like, just because you've used five eights for so long your whole life, okay, it's one sharpening. Ch try something else. Try try a different sharpening. Try something that's you know gives you more glide and maybe gives you a little more opportunity to use your edges um, in your control. But yeah, that's I all I have to say about what Pete has. Yeah, you you might have like I I maybe did that for like forever and then one day i changed and thought that this might be better and i did and it was you know it might not work you might not think it is but it, it's worth trying for one sharpening you know one thing i tell people too is you just if you make small incremental changes to the way you're sharpening it's not going to be such a 
overwhelming experience. You won't even notice. Sixteenths, right? You don't have to go from five eighths to an inch. You can go from yeah. five eighths to eleven sixteenths or three quarters and slowly make that progression into a bit of a different hollow to kind of feel how that works for you. Another thing too, a lot of players don't think about is as they get heavier and put on weight, the way that skate digs into the ice changes substantially, right? You're 150 pounds versus 220. Your skate sharpening is going to need to be way different as well. So good point. That's a really good point. Anything you want to add, Dave? No, I think it's just like uh, the boy said, I think being open to change and, Maybe given that whether you're trying your skates maybe. differently or or getting something sharpened differently, or maybe even being open to try a different brand, I think uh, just being open to to change and be willing to to try if something else is better out there is important. Yeah, I was gonna say, and on the other end of what Pete said about his or Dave said about you know the one eye like ankle flexion thing, like I'm kind of the opposite. Like I'm doing a double mm-hmm. double tie on my top and it's really tight and it's on the top and my skates are really stiff. And obviously, like you said, it plays in and I'm a lot bigger and a lot heavier. Um, and that's one of the reasons why obviously I do it. But at the same time, like, I, I just like that feeling that I have, you know, of when I'm, um, you know, like pushing through that, it's like a, you know, almost like a springy yeah, feeling when you have your skates feeling. very tight on the front. I, I don't know, I've done that for, for um, yeah. a while. All right, the last question I just have for you guys is uh, I know everyone's kind of trying to figure out ways to stay involved in the game and try to keep whether it's their hands or their feet or their shot or whatever they want to work on going. What do you think the easiest thing for young players to work on would be right now? Uh, I, I think there's two right now that would be easiest. Um, one being puck handling. Uh, all you need is just just stick in a puck pretty simple you can do it anywhere you can do it outside in the sidewalk in your garage in the kitchen I mean your mom or dad probably won't let you but truthfully you can stick handle anywhere and I think that's one thing that's going to make a massive difference allowing you to play with your head up and absorb more information and then the second thing would be with all this free time you know you should be watching hockey watch old NHL games the best players that that you can you know, in the game today and, and try to improve your hockey IQ, I think, you know, it's a unique time where, you know, you could watch two or three NHL games from past nights in one day where you normally maybe wouldn't have that time. So uh, I think you really want to take advantage of it to, to watch as much hockey as you can. Mm-hmm. I think another thing probably it's obviously, you know, different based on everyone's situations and obviously where they live, but if you have any sort of space and, uh, I think shooting is, is such an important part of the game. I mean, you want to get paid, you want you got to shoot the puck, you got to score goals. And I think working on your shot is always so important. I mean, the highest paid players in the league all can rip the puck, um, whether you're a fast guy like McDavid or you're a pure you know, shooter or sniper like Ovechkin and Samkos um, and guys like Kucherov. I mean, I think that's a skill where it's you can never be too good of a shooter. There's no such thing. So I think that's maybe one thing, depending on the situation and space, that is, is such an important thing to work on. Anything you want to add? I know it kind of covers the the two spots that I was thinking about right away. Yeah. um, I would say, to be honest with you, it's easiest. You don't need to do anything or you don't even need to move to do it. You just um, mental training and um, focus and um, meditation and, you know, using, using that to create, you know, pictures in your head. And, and while you're doing that, feel it and feel what it what it what it's like to uh you know to be playing in whatever level you know you're trying to be playing at or doing whatever you're trying to do you know if you're if you're visualizing and you're seeing these things over and over in your head and it's uh one of the fastest way to you know improve to be honest is your mental strength and mental mental side of the game it's just helps so much i think i kind of got into it i know in this last year here a lot more than I did before. I always uh, visualize before games and before game days and stuff like that. But I kind of took it to another level this year. And I just noticed like, you know, I felt just so much more prepared for the game. And it just felt like it took a lot off my shoulders. You know, you kind of get, you know, when you're going into a game, regardless, you know, it's pretty at any level, you know, you get a little 
you know, psyched, amp, amped up, um, a lot of adrenaline. So, you know, it really calms you down. It gives you like a feeling like, you know, you've, you've already been there and you've already played the game. So I think these kind of things can do a lot for anyone, you know, like really helps a lot, like building confidence. And, uh, you know, if you can see yourself playing at a level and doing stuff, then it'll help a lot, I think. Absolutely. All right. Um, any other thoughts you guys want to shoot at us or? No, I think it's just a great time for, uh, you know, young kids out there to be working hard and just trying to get better than their buddies and do the little things every day to become a better player. Sounds great. All right. Thanks again uh, for you guys for hopping on. Be safe out there and uh, hopefully we'll see you around the rink soon. Yeah, no kidding. Be safe. Thanks, Brian. Take it easy.